Hi all, welcome to today's video and today what we're looking at is a very important fact of heat on the boat or keeping the boat warm which I know is certainly something that is very very close to Joe's heart so what we've actually got is a very high quality Chinese diesel heat heater as they're often known as um, so we're gonna have a quick look at it today and main aim for today is just to have a quick look at where it's gonna mount and figuring out how it's going to mount uh, so let's first of all let's have a look what's in the box so we've got some spare gaskets and things like that for servicing it later down the road uh, we've got the little green computer controller thing um, which figure out where that's going to mount probably somewhere in the new electrical panel uh, also comes with a remote control guess when you're laying in bed you can turn the heater on if you want to uh, very short section of exhaust. I'm not sure if that's all the exhaust that came with it, but I guess so. Uh, and a little silencer. They're not going to be any use because uh, A, that's not long enough, uh, and B, this is designed, it's got a drain hot port in the bottom of it, so this is designed for going outside of a van, not inside of a boat, so we're going to have to get a different uh, style of exhaust for it. Uh, it did helpfully, this one, come with... Can you find it? Yeah, it came with an actual through hole uh, exhaust port which is quite nice uh, and that's just the seals for it uh, it looks like stainless steel but I don't know we'll probably end up using it but we'll see how it goes uh, mounting plate generally again that's used for um, uh, at the bottom of a van uh, I'm not sure obviously that's not stainless steel so I'm not sure how well that would survive in a marine environment so we may not end up using that uh, fuel line, probably won't end up using that. It's a very tiny fuel line, we'll probably get some better quality fuel line. Um, a little outlet port, uh, there's two of these I believe. Uh, yeah, um, don't know, might use these. The, the boat fortunately does have some kind of um, places for ducting to go. There's some already some like vent pipes that run up to the front of the boat, which is going to make life a little bit easier. So I'm not sure if we're going to end up using that or not. Uh, it does come with a couple of these. I'm assuming these extend, right? Maybe not. These are um, yep. these are the actual ductings for uh, sending the heat and the air where we need it to go, which I'm gonna lie. They're pretty rubbish. I wasn't really planning on using these anyway, but like you're not going to get far with those. But two very short pieces of ducting. Uh, you've got a get this bit out of it first. Got a plastic T piece, which assuming it's rated for the heat, I probably will end up using because why not? It comes with it, and it's plastic, so it's not going to rot in the marine environment. Uh, little fuel pump. That's what delivers the diesel to the heater wiring loom for collecting up the heater as well as the control panel and all that and the 12 volt supply for the fan and things um, this is the air intake uh, so this is not the air intake for the uh, for the actual sort of air blower but for the uh, the fuel system the, uh, good job that's not fragile uh, yeah this is the uh, air intake for the actual air into the combustion chamber shall we say uh, Pretty hefty, heavy duty, weird feeling rubbery uh, insulation pipe. That actually feels pretty good. May end up using that, but it's not gonna be long enough, as I say, because I'm gonna have to get a longer exhaust for it. Um, very basic looking fuel filter. Probably replace that with something a little bit better. Uh, some rubberized connection points and some almost certainly non-stainless steel clips, so they'll be pretty useless as well. Uh, load of fittings, none of which look like they're stainless steel. Well, they almost certainly won't be stainless steel, so pretty much none of that's going to be of any use because it's just not going to last. Uh, very tiny, tiny fuel pickup line. Uh, ooh, losing. Oh, that's awkward. That should have been attached. Um, now the diesel tank is just down. Nope, down here, we'll have a look at that in a second. 
Um, I don't think I'm going to bother using that. Um, I'm just going to basically put a T into the uh, the fuel line, the main fuel line out of the tank, so it saves me having to have a separate one. I don't think. I mean, hopefully you can see how tiny that pickup line is. I don't think it's going to interfere with the engine. Not that we'd really probably be running the heater and the engine at the same time that often. Um, and then there's a mounting plate again, not stainless steel, so I'm guessing that's just galvanised steel. So probably that'll end up getting used as a template, but again, not going to be using that. Uh, instructions, which I will almost certainly need to read, because, uh, yeah, we will need to know how all this goes together. And I think the only last thing is, uh, stuck in the box, uh, well, this really is not wanting to come out on its own. is oh, the actual heating unit which it's already got rust on it actually i don't think that is rust i think it's i think that's from something else so this is the five kilowatt version uh should give us plenty of power uh, i'm assuming most people who watch this will have seen one of these before and get what the concept of it is but how it essentially works is if i just pop this off um, so what you've got here is a metal box Diesel goes in through here, air goes in through one of these, make sure I figure out the right one, uh, exhaust comes out the other one, diesel burns inside of here, this metal box gets incredibly hot, uh, this on the end here is a fan, spins, sucks or blows air, depending on which way around it is, uh, again, probably should read the instructions so I know that, um, and so all of the nasty diesel -y fumes and stuff are kept in here in a separate circuit air carries through the unit uh, and that is what blows nice clean air into the boat keeps it warm uh, but more importantly keeps it dry because if you don't have any source of heat on a boat um, you know, which is being cold is unpleasant what's much worse is the damp uh, there's no you know there's no way getting around it if you are surrounded by water things get damp uh, so you know the main reason for this is you know so we can keep a bit of warmth and dryness in the boat so it's not too terrible um yeah so that's kind of roughly how it all works now let's have a look at where it's going to go looking down into the engine hatch which is looking pretty unpleasant and is still missing the sail drive so my original plan was essentially for it to mount here so i think there is still space here for it however i'm a little bit concerned because this is obviously the diesel tank here and having it right next to the main diesel tank uh could be a little bit problematic if they were to get into a fire or something like that um roughly diesel isn't quite as sort of explosive as petrol is but uh still you wouldn't want to get into a fire there so with that in mind we might need to sort of think about another option for this to be honest i think technically there would be space but it's going to be pressed right up against the diesel tank so that's probably not a very smart idea so that's kind of plan a out the window i think plan b wise would be to mount it back here somewhere which there is sort of plenty of space i could easily mount it onto this back wall back here and it's kind of out of the way of everything it is going to make life a little bit more complicated when it comes to venting it i mean the exhaust isn't going to be too much of an issue because this is all hollow uh got the gas locker here which uh would probably be a way to get around it or to be honest if i was going to mount it there i would probably just send the exhaust straight out that way um no reason to to move it over to the other side unnecessarily so um you know and just basically put the vent straight out of the hole which would make for a really short run on the exhaust um which is of course feasible um, there is, if I can show you, there is a hollow behind here. Um, which right now has just got a load of random crap that's fallen into it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about that to be honest. Um, I think that is going to be the best option. Uh, other option would be this locker here, but um, I don't really want to use this locker for it because I feel like this is quite a usable locker. Yeah, part of the reason I was hoping to have it on the uh, starboard side is that if you look down here, there's already 
a vent hole here and there's also this one here which I believe if I stick my arm into it goes this away somewhere but to be honest I'm not 100% sure where it comes out uh, I thought I did know but uh, looking at it now I'm not 100% sure where it comes out oh, excuse me oh, squeezing through all my crap um, I thought it came out down here underneath the uh, the chart table somewhere but I am mistaken so maybe it comes out in the engine bay let's have a look you're not gonna lie there is there is a vent down on this side but obviously that's on the, uh, the, the port side so that's not the one we're looking for um, so yeah I'm not 100 sure where that uh, hole comes out so maybe that wouldn't have been as useful or as uh, good to put it on that side as I thought the vent that I showed you in the cabin the other day and look down here I don't know if you'll be able to see it I believe it actually comes out down there you can just see it above that sanding pad on the left there so if that is correct and if I show you inside um, you can just about see it here I believe that, that is lined with a steel pipe or an aluminium pipe and goes all the way to the back there which would make venting the uh, the, obviously the hot air into the cabin very easily because there's also that other one there going up to the front so I could mount basically a T-piece there, have one coming out into the main cabin, one going through there and heating up the bathroom and bedroom area. Okay, so through the power of editing and money, I have swapped out a lot of the stuff that I had before and got myself some better stuff for the boat. So I've got a longer length of um, stainless steel exhaust. Uh, I've got myself a stainless steel mount, which is what it's going to be mounted on. Um, I've got myself a proper boat muffler which, uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, what else have I got? Oh yeah, I've got myself a load of exhaust wrap just so we can put some insulation on that exhaust. Um, got some stainless steel uh, exhaust clamps. Uh, got myself a box of stainless steel uh, Jubilee clips just for various bits and bobs. And I think that's about everything. The only other thing I got was some aluminium mesh, which I may or may not use to make a guard around the heater just to keep anything from sticking against it and melting. So, a bit daunted by this, but it's about time we actually dive into this and start trying to figure out how we're going to fit it. falls under the F my life uh, type job um, but I think as much as it's painful and I'm bending in very unnatural ways to get to this position I think I'm actually going to put the exhaust so turning around in my little hell hole uh, I think I'm going to put the exhaust so this is the main boat exhaust you can see here I think I'm going to put it over on this side somewhere uh, a couple of different reasons number one uh, Hopefully you can see, okay. Uh, this is single skin, so I don't have to worry about foam and reinforcing the foam. Um, secondly, um, I was thinking about putting it over here. Um, you can see that's the bilge uh, pump for cockpit bilge pump, or not actually engine bay bilge pump. Um, I was going to put it there, which hopefully would be a bit lot more convenient to reach, but unfortunately um, I don't think I can do that because it's just too close to the actual uh, um, the outlet there and I think it's going to end up buggering that up, so I think um, I'm going to actually put it over here, which then gives me more room to run the exhaust and get the muffler in. Um, obviously I've got plenty of space here, this, these are, hope you can see these, these are the back of the swim ladder. So I can't, I don't really want to put it under the swim ladder, so yeah, this is kind of my only option. Uh, unfortunately, it does mean being in this hellish place for quite some time.
So I've managed to figure out the routing for the exhaust and I think it's going to have to come out basically here with a bit of tape. Uh, so now is the nerve wracking part in any boat owner's life where I have to drill a hole through my bloody hull. So yeah, let's uh, see how this goes. So the diesel heater is all hooked up. Um, it's only, I've only done a sort of temporary hookup because I don't want to sort of fully root all the hoses and cabling and then find out that it's not working. So I've just kind of rigged it up with a separate diesel tank, uh, a bit of ducting to just vent the heat out of the back compartment. Um, unfortunately the ducting, although I was able to get it through um, the existing kind of channel that runs through the side of the boat here, uh, it got stuck somewhere along the way uh, and the pipe got a bit mangled as I sort of pulled it through the last bit uh, and then in trying to sort of reshape it and, and get it in the right place to connect up to the diesel it actually tore it in half which was kind of annoying um, so I've actually ordered a, a 90 degree elbow which I think is going to be necessary because it's quite tight where it comes out the back of the uh, uh, the back of the vent pipe 
Um, so yeah, I'll have to wait for that to get it all hooked up properly. Um, and I might order a little extra bit of ducting because the ducting at the piece that I've got is all a bit mangled and, and horrible. But in theory at least, it's all wired up together, it's all connected. So when we switch it on, the little control panel here should spring to life. So let's find out if I've done this right, shall we? Uh, so it's on central heating. Oh, okay. Well, we got a... Uh, we got something going on. Um, press the power button. Okay, it says it's on. Can I control? I can hear something out the back. Should we go and see if it's actually doing anything? The fan's on. It's just clicked off. The pump itself doesn't seem to be pumping. Have a look down here. Um, see, there's no fuel going into that. So, tell you what, why don't I do a novel thing and have a quick look at the instructions and then we'll try again. Right, so, instructions perused, shall we say. Um, managed to get the uh, pump primed, which I think, yeah, I had to press some special buttons on that. Also, weirdly, um, it stopped working and there's an inline fuse near the heater and it had actually blown, um, which is kind of disconcerting. But when I looked, it was a five amp fuse and in the manual it says 15 amps, so hopefully that was the reason why. Um, yeah, the pump, I've been warned, well, from, well, understood from my readings, that the pumps for these things are fairly obnoxious in terms of they have this, like, banging kind of sound. And, yeah, I've got to be honest, despite knowing it was coming, I still wasn't prepared for how obnoxious the pump is. So, we might have to look at getting, uh, a, a new one but the fuel should be more or less um, close now to where it needs to be so let's um, let's read page two and uh, turn it on yeah go and uh, have a look see what's happening and the pump has quieted down quite a bit now that it's seemingly full of diesel Ooh, things are starting to sound a little bit more fearsome. Like there's some fire going on. I feel there's much coming out of the exhaust right now. Yeah, it's certainly getting warmer. Oh, spinning up like a jet engine. Holy shit. <laughs> it's definitely warm air coming out of that. Oh. And there's warm air coming out of the exhaust. Not too bad though. It's quite pleasant warm air. It's not too hot, everyone was telling me I was kind of worried it was gonna be like Really like uh, red hot, melting hot air coming out of it, but it's uh, it's just sort of nice, warm. It's kind of like what you'd expect from like a an electric heater, I guess. A quick look at the exhaust, make sure nothing's melting onto it. I have noticed I've left a couple of cable ties on the exhaust, so we'll shut her down because they're soon, very soon going to melt. 
and uh, yeah, plastic cable ties on an exhaust system is probably not a good idea. Uh, okay, yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got indicators going on here now, so I'm guessing I can... I don't get what this Hertz thing is, I need to have a look at that. Can slow that down. But we're going to turn her off. Off, okay. It sounds like she's stopping. Can take a few seconds for it to clear out the combustion chamber and uh, exhaust all the heat. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to call that test a success. Still got some work to do to uh, plumb her in properly. But yeah, at least she seems to be working and she's blowing some hot air. So when we're sailing in the middle of summer and it's 30 degrees like it has been now, will be uh, extra toasty. But in the end I got the ducting plumbed in and I got the control panel mounted on the electrical board and put it all together. It's still a little bit temporary, I'll probably adjust it in the future but it at least works and uh, hopefully should provide us some warmth. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Prices will be on the screen now and if you did enjoy this video and want to see more like it, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.